the Qadianis have spread these lies about Isa ibn Maryam. That's why people are having doubt. And you're also missing uh, Abu Layth, who's spreading this. May Allah Azza wa Jal give him guidance or stop him from spreading these lies. Because he, it was fine in the beginning, right? You give a fatwa here or there that you disagree with, but this is something about Akhir is Zaman that is important. Why would you go against this, right? Uh, people don't have enough. If you want to say, well, look, the people are weak. So my people are weak, so I'm going to make talfiq and I'm going to give fatawa that are really easy going. All right, that's your choice, right? Uh, uh, we can disagree. But are you going to say that their iman is so weak that they can't bring themselves to believe that Jesus is going to come back, Imam Mahdi is going to come, Prophet, uh, the, uh, the Dajjal is there, right? So uh, so we're going to eliminate that belief because they're, they're not, uh, uh, people are, don't have strong enough iman to believe in these things. You're going beyond your bounds. I'm telling you, you're going beyond your bounds. And and anyone who goes beyond their bounds from within, Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, and starts preaching this stuff, it's not going to end well. I'm just telling you, it's not going to end well. Do you believe Dajjal to be an individual system or both? I mean, unbelievable. I mean, all the questions are on this subject. We answered that. Of course, he is a individual in the flesh. I don't, I don't see what is hard to believe in that. Right. What is so hard to believe in that? Malm believes Dajjal to be uh, an illusion. Isa will not return, and same for Imam and Mahdi. All right, well, uh, let, him, let him believe what he wants. It's, it's wrong, right? I'm just I'm telling you it's wrong. Simple as that. I mean, sometimes there's just no way to have a debate. You're just wrong. There's no debate on the subject. There's no controversy on the subject. There's nothing except that he's wrong. If there and it's and it's a dangerous mistake. If there is a huge pothole, right, and a trap down the road, and everyone's warning about it, and then someone comes and says there is no trap, that person is dangerous, right? Then everyone will fall into it and be head towards it, okay, because of that person. So that person has to be stopped. I can't stop him, right? But he there's a creator watching and, and he's gonna be stopped. Right? Mole says there are sheikhs who claim jesus was crucified but did not die on the cross uh, see honestly this brother's keep not this brother but uh uh the whoever keep the people keep spreading that prophet asa bin maryam uh or uh and all this doubt about his being raised and coming back i mean i keep getting questions on this i mean why would you bring that up what is bothering you with this belief uh, not him, not the questioner, but in general. So he says here that there are sheikhs who claim Jesus was crucified. This is not a sheikh then. He's a quack. But did not die on the cross. Like I said, quack. Because Quran clearly says, Ma salabu. That means he was not even placed on the cross. The Quran says, Ma salabu. Wa ma qatalu. They didn't crucify him nor kill him. What does that mean? That crucifixion does not necessitate killing. You can put someone on a cross and take him down. You've crucified him, but you haven't killed him. Quran negates both. He was never put on the cross. And he was not killed. Due to what the historians have been claiming regarding the crucifixion. What historians do they, what history do they have? They barely have anything to go on. Barely have anything to go on. And anyway, let's say they bought you a hill of evidence this big, a mountain of evidence. And then Allah says something. Which one are you going to believe? This is an epistemological uh, uh, disqualification right there. You got your revelation telling you one thing. You have a theory, right, on the other side. With I'm telling you, there is very, very... I've, I've taken these courses in George, uh, at Georgetown, George Washington, Rutgers, all the, Bible, uh, uh, the, the history of the Bible, and these courses. I've taken all these classes, right? And you can just read about them. By the way, you don't even need to take classes. You can just go and buy these books and force yourself to read them. Okay, they're tedious. On the history of the origin of the book, the Bible, right? Let alone the person. Forget the person. The book itself, right? And how dubious the whole thing is, right? And how no certainty exists on the book, let alone the person. Let alone how he died, okay? Doesn't really make a difference to me what anyone says. Once you, we have already established our epistemology as Muslims is al-wahi and the correct understanding of al-wahi. 
than al-aql, than al-his, al-his, which is like empirical data, uh, right? Whatever it is. Then al-urf, what people do, okay? We've already established that. So once wahi has plugged in something, that on this issue, the ruling is X, okay? Then when I look down the epistemological chain, if someone is bringing me something else, it doesn't make a difference what you say. Wahi has already made a statement on this. If the Supreme Court makes a statement on a matter, okay, and then some lower court comes and issues a statement, the statement of the lower court, if a thousand lower courts make a statement, it doesn't matter, all right? It doesn't matter. On the scale, the Supreme Court right, is weightier. If they make one sentence from them is weightier than a thousand treatises all right, from legal experts and lower courts. That's how epistemology works. That's how these things work. So if these mashayikh are going to, now, I don't care what you bring me. If it is certain, and we have certainty, and there is jumhur, I'm not even going to say ijma because these mashayikh are so touchy about ijma. Forget ijma. Jumhur opinion of the ulama of aqidah and tafsir and hadith. Okay? Okay? That a certain matter ruling is X, Y, and Z. That now we can take our, make this our deen and make it part of our deen. Wajib to believe. All right? It doesn't matter what anyone else brings. I'm, I'm just shutting the door right now because what's the point? Let those specialists in history deconstruct these theories. Okay? And, and, and we know that historians and scientists, it's not objective. They're still human beings with agendas, right? Histo the idea that science and history can be totally objective is one of the biggest myths out there because the scientist is coming with his preconceived notions. The historian is coming with things that bother him, right? And so constantly these scientists and historians from the West, they are coming with an anti-Christian background if they're coming like that. They oftentimes, it, that's what pushes their research, right? So to think that they're all uh, just objective history doesn't exist, all right? All right, Mustafa Mansour says, Assalamu alaikum. Do you believe Dajjal to be a sheikh, individual, or a system? More confusion on fundamentals of religion. The Dajjal is a person, okay? He is a person. The Prophet talked about his mother. The Prophet talked about his hair. The Prophet talked about his body shape. Okay, the prophet talks about him being killed, right? That he's going to be killed. Can he be a system? Yes. Can he be a worldview? Yes. He's also a person, okay? We are going back here in our levels here. We're, we're now bringing up and discussing, and may Allah end these, uh, these, this confusion on the Akhiru Zaman issues. Now, now this is a controversial issue or an issue to be discussed. Why don't we now discuss how many gods there are next? Because that's where we're going, okay? Okay, because there is no discussion on this subject that Ad dajjal and Imam al-Mahdi and Prophet Isa ibn Maryam, they are all real human beings in the flesh that will come, and that's part of our Iman. And if you have a hard time believing it, go polish your heart with some dhikr. Remember, okay, recite the Qur'an, and remember... Uh, uh, that our deen is about ghaib, belief in the unseen. The unseen is in the past, the unseen is in the future. There's partial ghaib. That means it's, it's ghaib for a bulk of humanity, okay? But soon, in this life, it will be haqiqah. It will be a real thing that you see right in front of your eyes, right? Maybe not us, but future generations will, okay? And for them, it's not ghaib. It's his physically right in front of them. So that's partial ghaib. Sheikh Saeed Ramadan al-Bulti divided up the ghaib in that certain things will always be ghaib for us, right? There will always be ghaib, such as akhira. What does it look like, the Day of Judgment, okay? Uh, all that will always be ghaib. No one will ever see that. And there's partial ghaib, okay? And that is that which is to come, like yet juj and juj. Why don't you tell us what is yet juj and juj, okay? Uh, is that something else too? Is that... Uh, 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 what is that? What is yet juja met juj? A virus, right? That that goes around killing people. Is it a bacteria? I mean, come on. 